All right, so that's the AFC, man. So it's time to jump over into this NFC. Uh, I want to say uh, which one, which one, which one, which one, which one? Uh, Giants and Eagles. Um, my team is out the playoffs. Uh, your niece, my daughter, is a, a very big Philadelphia Eagles fan. So ah. um, I'm pulling for her quarterback, and I'm also pulling for just as a football coach. I'm pulling for um hurts um this young man has defied the odds for everything that everybody said he couldn't do oh he can't be in a, a pocket passer um when the game is on the line he's not gonna make the play to beat you um he's not gonna win from the pocket like he's done everything um that he wasn't supposed to do and it just came from his hard work dedication to the game right um, people can a- get better they can get better. <laughs> one of the issues is, and, you know, I don't want to go on my soapbox, but one of the issues is um, in the NFL and, and certain levels of football, people don't want to coach anymore. You know, they want the ready-made meal, ready-made popcorn. Product. Yep. Yeah, they want, the, they want it to come out of the oven ready. Um, they don't want to do player development. No, it's, those days are, you know. It's but it's kinda, like that sports-wide, though. It's not just it, the NFL. It is. It's kind of sports wide. You're right. Um, you know, and you kind of got to look at it from a point of view like this this young man or any young man who makes it to the professional level has some degree of kind of talent and skill. And all of a sudden he just not good anymore. Mm. Like how did how you just fall off from being, you know, an all American and a national champion or a Heisman Trophy winner and doing all these great things, and then all of a sudden you just can't play the game anymore. So Right. Um, some of that is coaching, you know, and uh, he's been coached up. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles are going to win the game. Um, it's going to be a good game. I think it's, you know, I think they're they're in the same division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're in the same division. So there's their, you know, familiar, they're familiar with each other. So they're going to, it's going to be a great game. But I think the receivers that uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have, the run game, the offensive line, that stuff is going to wear on you. The RPOs and the option and playing 11 on the 11 football versus him not being a factor without being able to run or use his, those RPOs, he's going to be a weapon. But even with that said, the, the uh, New York Giants, their quarterback has been running the football. It's, he's yeah. been very, very, you know, pushing the ball with running. And he'll, he'll tuck it. He'll pull it down and tuck it. And you got to account for him in the run game as well. And yes. they have a good running back in New York, too. And they're going to have to pay him or uh, let him go after this season. So it's going to be very interesting. I, I'm going with the Eagles, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm um, I'm going with the Eagles, too, man. I am going with the Eagles. Um, my, my thing is when I look at, okay, the Eagles, okay, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, If I look at the Eagles defense and I look at the Giants defense and honestly, I look at those, I look at what the Giants did against the Vikings, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just certain plays that Kirk Cousins couldn't make. Jalen Hurts can create, you know, on certain throws that it's just certain plays that he can do. Of course, he's, he's a dual threat quarterback. You know, you have going to have a battle of two dual threat quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it's just Hurts can make extra plays. He can do – he can make take advantage of those mistakes that the Giants defense is most likely going to make because I believe that the Eagles definitely have the better defense out of the two, even though I know um, the Giants, you know, they paid some money for some top-name quarterbacks. I believe what, Bradbury and um, also Jackson is over there too, I think, or Dory. So, so. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. They have, like, a secondary, but you just see, like, as a total whole as a defense, sometimes they just, you know, give up. they give up points and they don't capitalize on mistakes and then they give up mistakes, you know. So, with that, you doing that against the Eagles at home, Herps healthy, you know, everything is just going to be tough. 
And then you look at the offenses, and I just like like you said, those two receivers. It the Eagles have receivers that that the Giants just don't have. So. Yeah, yeah, man. So okay, last game, the divisional okay. round, old rivalry renewed right here. Yes, Cowboys, 49ers. This okay. right here is gonna be a big game, man. It's a it's a huge game, and it's a game that I'm going to watch personally because um because of my love for the game of football. I'm a very big uh person on history, and it's, it reminds me of the uh the Bill Walsh Hall of Famer Bill Walsh. Now I can say Hall of Famer Jimmy Johnson, Super Bowl mm-hmm. champion. That lineage of we win over here, like when you are walking into the facility, you're passing by Lombardi trophies. You are you know, so, in both you know, facilities. Both facilities. So, you know, it's a lot on the line. And, you know, this, that old 80s, we just don't like you type football. Like, we we go about things different. And it's San Francisco, how they built that defense. That defense is a very good defense. And um, the Dallas Cowboys play defense, too. You know, they, they, they'll get after you. Um, top they have, in the league this year, right? Yeah, I believe so. And uh, but this is my issue with the Dallas Cowboys. You can't and um, Kellen Moore is the offensive coordinator. I've been a big fan of Kellen Moore when he was uh, at Boise State. Definitely um, future head winning, coach, winning a lot of football games at Boise State. I I use uh, Kellen Moore's uh, film when I'm teaching quarterbacks. Um, I think he can't get him fall in love with the passing game. I believe the Cowboys are really a running team, and Dak really works better when he comes off of play action. When he works off of play action, he works quick game, and then he gets everything else off of that, he's better. But asking him to just carry you in the passing game by himself for these type of games versus a very good San Francisco 49ers defense, you're asking a lot. Now, on the flip side of this, San Francisco's young quarterback, can he play against this defense of the Dallas Cowboys? Because, you know, San Francisco has been the draft. good. Yep, he's the last one in the draft. Um, and he's in the league now. So, you know, all that really doesn't matter. You, It's playoff time. It's all hands on deck. You got to put your chips in. And it's time to go get rings and hang banners. So um, it don't matter where you was drafted. It's time to play. So, um, like, can he hold up when it's third and nine and you have to drop back and throw? Can he hold up and make great decisions? Because this, those windows, as everybody know, in the playoffs, those windows get tighter and tighter and tighter. And your mistakes get magnified. And so you got to be able to be play good, flawless football. And I think the game is going to go to um, the team that makes the less mistakes. Yeah. I think Dallas got to fix their kicking situation because missing those extra points was is just a bad look at this time of year. Right, definitely. So, you know, they got every fix point it. counts. I think they signed a kicker for their practice squad, and uh, Hall of Famer Jerry Jones is trying to get him another ring. So it's going. This I think, and I don't want to go ahead. I don't want to go. You know, go too far ahead. But the team that win this game might might hey, be in a Super Bowl. They got a chance, right? Yep, they got a they got a chance. But I'm gonna go with the San Francisco 49ers because I'm a I'm a big fan of uh the great Hall of Famer Bill Walsh, Super Bowl champion, um, and their lineage and that defense is gonna be good. And I don't think that young quarterback they have is going to throw the game or you know mess up so much where they he puts them in some bad situations. But that Dallas defense, Lord of mercy. I'm a I'm going to be honest, man. I'm a fan of Brock, Brock Purdy, man. I'm a fan of him. I ain't going to lie. I big love the underdog. I just, I'm a- yeah, yeah. It's like the underdog thing with him. You look at it, it's almost like if he didn't get drafted, you know, he may be working in sports casting and stuff instead of playing in the game. Yeah. He was the last pick of the draft, mystery relevant, which also lets you know that these so-called experts don't know what the hell they talking about. Yeah. Because how does this man go to be Mr. Irrelevant 
and he just threw for three touchdowns, 332 yards, 336, something like that, in a playoff game. Now, yeah, it was against the, uh, the Seahawks, but they still an NFL team in a playoff game the last time I checked. And he still had to execute the offense. He still had to, you know what I'm saying, play mistake-free and, you know, or at least mistake-free enough to for, for to give the team opportunity. And then he, you know, relied on that great defense that they have over there in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, uh, he's a good quarterback, man. And he's definitely a prime pressure on that quarterback room as far as like next year go, regardless of the outcome. Now, if he was to go to win the Super Bowl, that's his job, period. I don't care who you got out there. I don't care who you got in the quarterback room. That's his job. And it still might be because they are in the divisional round. But and if he wins this game, he may still lock it up, too. But he's played well. You know, for a guy who's pretty much a rookie, who's coming in big moment, can he sustain it enough to, you know, and take it further? I'm not sure, man, because he's going against one of the best defenses in the league uh, this year. And Dan Quinn, I mean, pretty good guy, you know, saying pretty good head coach. But, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, yeah, and he's a Super Bowl champion as a coordinator already. So... I feel like he's going to dial it up on him, man. I really feel like he's going to dial it up on per on Purdy a little bit. I feel like um, I feel like they're going to tell you know they're going to match up pretty good. I think they're going to match up pretty good, man, against uh, these 49ers. But the thing that's the main concern for me on why I think the key for the Cowboys to win, and I think they're going to win if they do this. If they can take advantage of that uh, secondary of the 49ers, similar to how Geno Smith was, I think mm -hmm. when he was taking advantage of Ward on the back end, you see uh, it was absolutely merciful. You know, so it was there was no mercy from uh, DK on Ward, man. And like, what, two touchdowns over 100 yards. They got C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is prolific. And also, you know, just – um, uh, what Michael, Michael Gallup, he can stretch the defense a little bit too. So it's like if Dak can be, I guess, beginning of the season Dak, then, hey, man, it may it may be a pretty bad day. It may be a pretty bad day because – It's a different Lamb, season. It's, yeah. a different season. it's playoff time. But yeah, it is. In the regular season, it don't even matter anymore. Um, Dak really has to – what's been the – Pressure's percent, on Dak. Yes. Because uh, he's supposed to be the franchise quarterback now. They gave him the money. He's supposed to, and, you know, we're talking Roger Starback. We're talking Troy Aikman. We're right. talking the lineage of, of great quarterback play in Dallas. And you have to step into those footsteps now. You, you know, the expectation for Hall of Famer Jerry Jones to play under him is to win. Right. You have to win. And you have to win. And this really, is this time. is kind of your time. This yeah, is this your supposed time. to be your time. And this the concern for me has been um, the interceptions. The yeah. interceptions, he's been throwing some interceptions. Now, last game, the last 12 game, it looked it beautiful. He looked it in command and control. The ball was coming out great. He was making good decisions. And he, we have to train. If you can package that, that running the ball, play action, getting him moving, um, sprint passes, boots, um, nakeds, you get him moving a little bit, where he can use his legs, and you can let those two running backs that Dallas have um, yeah. control the game and let that offensive line get going. Because I think uh, Smith, their left tackle, is one of the best offensive linemen in football. Right. He's very good. Yeah. And having him on that left side is going to be great. And uh, Zach Martin is awesome as well. So, yeah. you just, you know, you can't. It's a coin flip, man. It's a coin flip, but I got to go with the San Francisco 49ers. I got to go with the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, their great G general hey. manager, Hall of Famer, uh, what, what's his name? John Lynch. John Lynch. Yeah, man. Well, Super Bowl man, I don't know. Hold on. They still got Cal Shanahan over there? Yes. Yeah, the, I'm uh, little Cowboys. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looked like you got a little pain from uh, some memories you've had. As a and we're not going to talk about on this channel. <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. On this we're not channel. We're going to talk about it. Um, Kyle's been to a Super Bowl. 
Uh, he's been to multiple Super Bowls and yes, uh, yes. hasn't been able to pull it out yet. So um, this, you know, if he pulls this out and gets this win and gets the a conference championship game, it's going to be very impressive saying that he's lost two quarterbacks. Um, yeah. And like you said, that, that, that quarterback room is going to change if this young man pulls this off. Definitely, if he, if he, if he can go to lose the Super Bowl, you have to. And if you think about it, you really got to evaluate and look at this young man from the point of view is he's playing with house money. Oh, he has nothing to lose. He can throw it up and gamble. And if it go wrong, it go bad. He say, "I'm Mister Irrelevant. Nobody thought I was going to do it anyway." I'm so, not even supposed to be uh, not supposed the to quarterback be. that's taking. Yeah. You know, I'm saying this, this. You know, so this team where it's going. I mean, he's still the field general, despite well, no matter what's going on, he has to execute. If he doesn't execute, you know, 49ers don't get as far as they, they've gotten. But yeah. I also want to say, too, the 49ers did play in a weak division this year, you know, so they was able to, you know, run off a few against a few bad teams at the same time, too, now. Yeah. So it's I'm just it this, this, you know, it's going to be different. We're going to see, man. I, I Gonna be a great game. I feel like, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Bengals and the Bengals and uh and uh, uh Bills are gonna be great. All the games are gonna be great. Honestly, just thinking about it, but I think this may be like the one that air that everybody should just be like, okay, definitely tuned in for this yeah. old rivalry like we was talking about. It got an old school feel to it. You know, you're going to have all kind of 49er and Cowboy alumni at this game, man. It's going to be epic. It's going to be definitely epic. So, definitely. I'm interested to see. I think if, if given the choice, the great Hall of Famer, Charles Haley, pass rusher who won Super Bowls for both the San Francisco 49ers and um, the Dallas Cowboys, I think he's going to go with the Dallas Cowboys if he had to stand on the sideline. Um, right. and pick one because he really loves Dallas. Um, but it's going to be who's who uh, for uh, the NFL alumni and Hall of Fame Gold Jackets who show up there. Right. Man, man, Haley may be so confused. He may have on uh, blue, gray, gold, and red on. I don't know. He may have some <laughs> kind of con- – some something going on like that. Who knows? But, yeah, man, until next time, man, be generational too. It's always time to be – the show that's cool and fly to A1 Forever Sports. Chris Tip Moore, you know why I settle for less when you can have more with the vision. Coach West, Chris Tip Moore, we out. Peace and blessings to you. We'll holler. A1! 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 Yeah, truly. Cooler and I'm flying to Jam! Cooler.